Doug, stand-up physicist, sitting down to give a talk, a whiteboard talk. And this is based on some comments I got on another YouTube video by Purple Penguin. He's a gentleman who's been following me for some time, and he's uh, better at physics than I am. <laughs> and uh, he's trying to you know, make me be better. And he actually came up with this idea of how to derive um, some of the expressions I've been working with vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, gravity. So he starts with two assumptions, and they're pretty simple ones. Like when you measure time, it's just a, 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 a watch you carry with you. And when you measure distance, you say, A, distance is going to be two events that happen simultaneous to the observer's um, observation that uh, come to them, and then it's the difference in time of that sort of thing. And that's it. Well, what's missing? <laughs> what's missing is saying, hey, the origin's got to be here. So the origins doesn't matter so much when you really care about differences in time and differences in space because you care about differences in space time. And this is the deeper one. You're not going to say that two observers are going to have to agree about the speed of light. It's like, isn't that illegal? It's like, we can do that later if we choose, but we're trying to free things up so we can just see uh, if there's something interesting going on. So let's start with the transformation we know works. <laughs> and that would be T prime equals gamma T plus gamma beta X. Great. Where these are the usual things, gamma equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus a velocity squared. And that beta is, in fact, a velocity, a dimensionless sort of velocity. And then there's the corresponding uh, change in space. Uh, x prime equals gamma x plus gamma beta t. And we're really going to keep our lives simpler and z prime equals z. Great. So we can decide to add an arbitrary function to time as long as it's like a constant sort of thing because if we do, are really interested in differences, that constant is just like going to go away. So how do we pick a, an interesting function to look at? In other words, I'm saying that t prime, t double prime now, equals the t prime plus this function of a simple function. Well, what we're going to try and do is simplify those transformation laws. Come up with the simplest expression for what t would be. All right. So what I'm going to do for this guy is I'm going to use uh, a, a function that is just minus x times beta. Great. OK, so now I just plug plug away. All right, so I said t double prime equals t prime. Oh, that's that first line, the gamma uh, t plus gamma beta x. No need to alter a thing. And then we're going to do minus beta. Oh, this is x prime, x prime. You go, oh, it's not good to have unprimed and primed in the same expression there. Well, we have x prime already. That would be this thing. So we just have to expand that out. Gamma t plus gamma beta x minus gamma beta x plus gamma beta squared, whoops, minus gamma beta squared t. Great. And we go, hey, I wanted something simpler. And so this equals then gamma t 1 minus beta squared. And we go, oh, hold it. That's like a gamma squared in there. 
So this really equals T over gamma. Nice. That's simple. <laughs> okay. Um, and so in particular, we say, well, if I were looking at differences of these things, then we know that like DT double prime equals uh, DT over gamma. Great. That That's really nice. And in particular, we'll notice that if, um, if say, dt prime, double prime equals zero, which is to say that it's simultaneous, the events are simultaneous, that means that they will be simultaneous in the other reference frame. And if you know your special relativity, you're like, well, that's different <laughs> because the whole one of the deep lessons of special relativity is that if it's if two events are simultaneous in one inertial reference frame, they may well not be simultaneous in another one that's traveling at a velocity uh, relative uh, to the other person. Now, if you're not traveling relative to the other person, that can actually be true. I mean, we're not going. To, it's not completely illegal. It's just considered like kind of rare because once you start moving relative to somebody else, it's actually necessarily the case that that's not true. But with that choice of the function there, we're in a situation where it is always going to be true. All right. So now we say, well, what happens with x double prime? How is that related? And so usual way to do this is to uh, draw a space-time diagram and see what happens with that okay and so if we have a nice stick over here and we say this is a uh, distance L and this is a distance 2L great then we these two our, our definition of how to measure it is that these guys at the same time send out photons and the photons hit that uh, world line of the observer and we say hey this is happens at t and this happens at 2t great but what time what um what time does it happen in this double primed frame hmm okay well it all depends on on what the gamma is and let's say the gamma was two okay then uh, if this was two, then two gamma t double prime equals the dt. So this will be uh, two t double prime. And this one will be four double t prime. And that means this is going to be twice the length or gamma the length. So the other transformation law we get is d x double prime equals gamma dx. Nice. Okay, now what we do is we look at what are some of the consequences of these two expressions. And we say, hey, well, that's kind of nice. We've got a new kind of symmetry going on here. We have that uh, d of space time, space, time equals uh, dt gamma gamma dx of course those wipe out hopefully cleaner than that and so this is a new conservation idea out there uh but you said mm, i bet <laughs> i bet the the whole speed of light thing i bet that doesn't work out that would be the ratio of the changes in space to time. So that would be dx dt double prime. And that equals, okay, we get a gamma uh, dx. And we get a dt 1 over gamma. So we get a gamma squared. Okay. Now, that's not a conservation law. Uh, I mean, these are going to be different. Um, for these two different observers. But since we've been precise about what we mean, uh, I mean, it's okay uh, thing to do. 
And is, here's one more relationship we can do, and that is if we think about the, the difference of the squares of these terms, in other words, if we think about um, this uh, d, d tau double prime squared equals dt double prime squared minus uh, dx. And again, I'm uh, simplifying it by not paying attention to the y and the z. Um, oh, and now, of course, it's true. But let's see what it looks like to the other observer uh, in the other coordinate sy uh, system. And let's see, that had the 1 over. So this is going to be d t, uh, dt, no primes, squared, gamma squared. And this is going to be gamma squared dx squared. And you could say, well, you're, you're just doing like math and <laughs> This has no physical significance. Uh, but actually, the only place I know where people are going to say, hey, your interval is different from my interval, is when we start dealing with gravity. And a uh, type of velocity that's associated with gravity that you don't have to be like I, traveling at <laughs> is an escape velocity. In other words, I have a particular escape velocity here in this basement in uh, Massachusetts. Uh, if I was uh, at the top floor of this building, it would be ever so slightly less. It gradually changes as you move up and down in the, um, in the gravitational field. So if we just said, let's just use, you know, the, the escape velocity that Newton himself derives back in the day, <laughs> you know, thinking about a cannon on top of a mountaintop and like firing it until it went, not only made an orbit, but actually decided to leave entirely the gravitational field. Um, he would say, using Newton's work, uh, this equals approximately uh, one minus two gm over c squared r dt squared unprimed, you know, because this is the difference of opinion about what the interval is, and as seen by the other person, okay, that, that kind of game is going on, um, and then we get this, so the cool thing about that is that would be consistent with some of the weak field tests, yeah, specifically like light bending around the sun, which was kind of like the first hurdle to clear uh, that uh, general relativity did with uh, flying colors uh, in 1919. So that's cool. And look, we haven't actually used the field equation. We, had, we don't have a Lagrangian. We don't have that usual kind of situation. Um, but I kind—I definitely very much like uh, this derivation because it's saying that Minkowski spacetime has a kind of symmetry that we should also look into. And and now that I understand what is, what's going on, I could I could tell you what's going on, <laughs> okay? And that is that we are saying, okay, we're looking at at spacetime where this is, this is x and this is t, and we're saying, hey, those horizontal and vertical lines, those are the zeros I'm dealing with here. Not not the zeros that, that make up the, the light cone, okay? That's the world of special relativity, and you have the relativity of simultaneity. I'm saying, no, let's, actually, I should put, let's do it that way. These guys are the zeros I'm starting to think about. And then you're going to have a, a series of hyperboles in here, um, just like you would in special relativity, except they're rotated by uh, 45 degrees because you're talking about the light cone as being your zeros. And all I'm saying is treat those, those the vertical and horizontal guys as your zeros and look at the logical consequences.
and I think you can quickly <laughs> get to something that's consistent with light bending around the sun, which would be rather remarkable uh, if it's eventually accepted by um, physicists in general. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. <laughs>